This video is about my views on HF portable operation, but it's a bit more than that. There's some news items, ICOM, a great deal from ICOM, and also I've just discovered in our archives a metal sign which was designed by the RSGB. It's about 18 inches diameter. I'll put it up on the screen now. It was a sign that they gave to approved dealers to put on the side of their premises. Yes, the RSGB apparently approved dealers. This particular sign was originally given to Low Electronics. Now, some of you may not know of Low Electronics. Others, like me, my similar age, will remember Low Electronics very well. Well, this sign has been languishing in our warehouse for ages. So I thought, well, I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to put it up on auction on eBay in a few days' time. And you can decide for yourself whether you want this in your radio shack or on the side of your premises or whatever you want to do with it. It's up to you. But I'll put a link below this video as soon as we put it up on eBay. It'll be a few days' time. So stick around. Here's a great news item. If you're thinking about buying the ICOM IC7300, now's the time to buy it. We'll give you software worth nearly £300. You'll get the RC28IP software package. It sells for £282, including VAT. And on top of that, you'll also get a three-year warranty backed up by ICOM UK. Now's the time to buy an ICOM IC7300. Welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm glad you could join me. I'm operating portable in Suffolk. You know, one of the things that I do when I operate portable is I like to go back to basics, basic ham radio. One of the descriptions I use is natural radio. What is natural radio? Well, natural radio is when you use nature to communicate. You've got no other help at all, you've got no repeaters, you've got no satellites, you're just using nature to propagate your signal to some point around the earth. And I also like to go back to basics using Morse code because that's how it all started and I'm quite enjoy Morse code. I know it's not for everybody but I enjoy it. It enables me to operate fairly low power and get very effective contacts and you know, when I operate portable, I also like to sort of go around the area and see what's happening. And uh, I visited a place called Woodbridge a few days ago. And that really highlighted how enjoyable it can be to go back to basics. I, I went to the quayside there and there's a workshop where they're actually rebuilding the boat known as Sutton Who. And they're rebuilding it using the basic techniques that was used originally when that boat was built. There was no machinery, it was all axes and uh, sort of chisels and so forth. And they're actually producing planks of wood from tree trunks using just basic techniques. So that really reminded me of how enjoyable ham radio can be when you go back to basics. Now as regards antennas, I don't think there's any particular antenna that stands out has been better for portable than another really. You either like the flexibility of an antenna that's capable of operating on several bands but maybe compromises or you like to use a single band antenna. In this trip I've used a single band antenna. I've used an inverted V dipole. Originally I was going to use it as a vertical and if you rotate an inverted V through 90 degrees you end up with a vertical antenna with a single radial. And that was the way I was going to use this one, but I decided to change and use it as an inverted V. But I did have a bit of a problem, actually. A quick shout out for Waters and Stanton. This video channel is supported by Waters and Stanton, and we stock a wide range of ham radio equipment. Check our website, there's some interesting products on there, and we ship all over the world. If you've got any questions, give our guys a call on the landline, the telephone number's on our website, or send us an email. We'll be more than happy to help you. Remember, Waters and Stanton, we've been in the business for 50 years. We know quite a lot about ham radio. 
On this trip I used the ICOM IC705, I was mainly operating CW and I had an external supply so I could run up to 10 watts. Sometimes things don't go right and sometimes I even forget my own advice and today I was erecting a simple 20 meter antenna. I pre-measured it at home and I knew it would be roughly right. I erected it and I found that I was getting resonance higher than I expected. So I added a little bit of wire at either end of this dipole configuration and to my surprise instead of the frequency going down it went up slightly. It didn't make a lot of sense. I had my antenna analyzer set so that I could see a spectrum a range of about 500 kilohertz and it was on a 20 meter band but I was seeing resonance at 15.2 megahertz and I was messing about with this antenna I thought this is defying gravity this antenna I'm adding wire to it and it's hardly making any difference at all and I made myself a cup of coffee and I suddenly thought wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute I'm measuring this 20 meter antenna with a short length of coax going into my antenna analyzer. I've got it on a range of 500 kilohertz and I think it's resonant on 15.2 megahertz because that's what the analyzer says. But I wasn't using a line isolator. I had common mode currents flowing and when I expanded the spectrum display to two megahertz, I got two dips. I got one at 15.2 megahertz and another one at around about 12 megahertz. And in fact, the 12 megahertz one was the correct dip. I then inserted a line isolator just before the coax went into the analyzer and all of a sudden everything came clear and perfect. It wasn't perfect in as much as the antenna was resonant at 20 meters because I've been adding wire and it was now resonant at 12.5 megahertz but I now only had one dip instead of two dips and I was looking at the wrong dip because I hadn't opened up the spectrum display. So let that be a lesson to you. It was a lesson to me and yet I've preached on this <laughs> several times in the past but sometimes things catch you out and perhaps you're not thinking as you should do and you take literally what you can see without thinking this is not making sense, which actually didn't make sense. Fortunately, after a cup of coffee and giving a bit of thought, I suddenly realized my error. So when you're messing about with aerials, do make sure that you have a line isolator before the coax goes into your antenna analyzer. Otherwise, like me, you may get some erroneous readings. And the readings you get and the errors you get really depends on the length of that coax. You might be fortunate. You might be fortunate with a decent or the right length of coax cable. You don't get that wrong reading. But believe me, use a line isolator when you're adjusting antennas. I didn't. And I wasted about two hours scratching my head. To support the antenna I use this MFJ 1904H 22 foot telescopic fiberglass mast and as you can see I lashed it to the rail ends on the deck in there and that supported my 20 meter inverted V. One of the important things when you're going out portable is to go out with the right frame of mind because when you're operating portable you're going to be using an antenna system that maybe you haven't used for, for a while or haven't even tried. You're probably going to run low power and of course conditions vary. So you need to go out with the right frame of mind that with portable operation you may not get as many contacts as you would hope for and certainly probably not as many as you would get at home. But it's really all part of the fun. Now the reason I say go out in the right frame of mind is because you need to enjoy yourself. You need to go out with your home radio gear but be prepared to enjoy yourself. And it means to say also take a look around the area. I mean if the bands are pretty quiet 
then you may have to sort of take a walk around or put gear back in the car or in your rucksack and have a wander around and come back later. It's quite amazing how that sort of attitude makes the whole thing more enjoyable. I mean, I was down at Woodbridge and uh, conditions weren't that good. So I thought, well, I'm going to have a walk around Woodbridge and I found some interesting things. I came across a, a tidal mill, which uh, works, it's basically a water mill, but it works uh, using the seawater. And also there was uh, some interesting boats moored there. So I took a look around and later on when I went back, conditions had changed. They were a bit better. And I had some interesting contacts. Low power. There weren't wonderful reports. 569, 579. That's okay. It's on CW. And I also worked some interesting stations because I was on the, I, I set the station up on 14060, which is the international low power calling channel. And it's quite amazing how many stations you can work there. And they're operating just like you. They're operating low power. Many of them portable. And it's good fun. So there is the need to go out with the right attitude if you're going to have some fun with ham radio when you're out portable. And if you're coming down to Suffolk, I would encourage you to visit Woodbridge and uh, some interesting shops there as well. So... Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been of interest to you. Slightly different, I suppose. It's not entirely about ham radio. But in essence, that was uh, one of the enjoyable parts of my trip. What I call natural ham radio. Low power, using mother nature and operating CW. Not for everybody, I grant you. But I enjoyed it. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio in whatever form it may be. And I'll look forward, as usual, to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.